Abused as a child and in and out of jail as an adult, Brian turned to Satanism to intimidate those around him. I hated people all my life. And if I couldn't use you, you meant nothing to me at all. Then a simple Bible verse caught his attention. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. And because I was reading truth, he was already starting to change me. On today's 700 Club Interactive. Well, welcome to the show. Muslim turned Christian apologist, Nabil Qureshi, has attracted attention for his candid videos sharing the details of his battle with cancer. Nabil recently had a 12th round of chemo, and on the way to the doctor, he was talking with his Uber driver about the treatments. Afterward, his driver offered him kind words and encouragement. Nabil said the moment touched him so much it made his heart lighter and that Christians should make kindness a part of their daily lives. Be kind, unnecessarily kind. Even, you know, if you have no reason to be, to be nice or to say what you have to say to give hope, um, let's just do it. Um, and let's be the trendsetters in that because Christ told us that they will know us by our love. And so to just be loving and to say prayers for people and to say kind words to them. Thanks for that mm -hmm. reminder, Nabil. That's a word for all of us, and we want you to know we're still praying for you. And boy, a little word, just a simple encouragement can mean so much. You never know what someone's going through, do you? Yeah, you never know what they're going through, and uh, just, a, just that kind word in, in, a, in season, yes. it can really, uh, really make a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a story a lot of people are trying to wrap their minds around. Same-sex couple Tristan and Biff are expecting a child together, but they're not adopting this time. Tristan, who's a trans man, is pregnant and is due today, July 14th. Um, I'm Tristan. This is Biff. We are a couple. We have two adopted kids. Um, and I am a transgender man, so I was born female and I kept all my original parts when I transitioned. Um, and then a year ago, a year and a half ago, I stopped taking testosterone um, so that I could carry a baby. So I am a pregnant man. It is possible. The pregnancy itself, I've just been kind of wrapped up in how cool it is. Um, and by now I know so many other trans men who've had babies that it doesn't feel as much to me like, oh, I'm doing this thing that is for women only. It feels more like, oh, here's this thing that mostly women do and some men have done as well. Well, the two are using their social media presence to push for changes in how medical care workers handle what they call non-traditional families and recommend doctors and nurses change how they speak to all their patients, like saying pregnant people instead of pregnant women. Well, I'm, I'm not sure that's going to take hold in today's culture, but you never know. I mean, it's one of these, uh, you know, how in the world does this happen? And here is a person who is born female but identifies male starts taking all of the hormones, starts taking testosterone supplements and is able to grow a beard and uh, appear as a man in, in, in life, uh, but decides to keep um, uh, the, I the guess the organs <laughs> says, yeah. uh, that allow for him, her uh, to become pregnant. Uh, so are we going to see more of that and is that uh, going to still be unusual in just you know, five to ten years from now? Probably not. Well, the, here, here's the other fact, I guess you could say, about this is, you know, men are not having babies. If you didn't have the original parts, you wouldn't be having a baby. So being pregnant and having babies is still something that women do. And just because we change words, in how we define people doesn't change that fact. I mean, it's just a curious scenario. I think the pressure is being put on culture and society to change definitions so that people who make personal choices can feel included. Well, I think somehow. even more than that is, is the medical science advances that, you know, just a few decades ago you couldn't find testosterone supplements, but now you can, and they're easily available, so you can elect to start taking them. Uh, mm -hmm. But if you don't change the underlying biology, the, the organs, if you will, uh, you're yeah. still capable of doing both. Yeah, well, hope the baby is healthy and yeah. normal. And we love babies. Yes, we do love babies. <laughs> babies, All babies are wonderful. Yeah. Well, it's not 
too unusual for two family members to share birthdays, but how about three? What are the odds of that? The newest addition to the Littleton family arrived three weeks early on July 1st, but Bodan's family thinks he was right on time because he shares a birthday with his father, Connor, born on July 1st, 1990, and his great-grandfather, Jim Morissette, born July 1st, 1931. By the way, about those odds, they're about 33,374 to 1, to be exact. <laughs> well, there's a generational legacy, and you wonder uh, what's going to happen to that baby. Yeah. There seems to be something significant here, and God works through the generations, mm -hmm. and it's amazing to see how he does that. Well, new research is linking sleep problems with the brain disease that robs more than 5 million Americans of their memory and ability to think. Researchers have surveyed around 100 people at high risk of developing Alzheimer's who currently have normal thinking and memory abilities. Participants also provided a spinal fluid sample. Results show that people who reported having sleep problems had more biological markers for Alzheimer's disease in their spinal fluid than those who did not report sleep problems. However, it's possible this is a chicken and egg scenario. Doctors aren't sure what comes first, the Alzheimer's or the sleep problems, and complete results can be found online at the Journal of Neurology. And let me underline for you from my own personal experience, I went through some pretty severe sleep issues uh, when I was averaging just three and a half hours of sleep a night and, you know, had to eliminate all caffeine from my diet, had to really look at regular exercise, but it, it worked a number on me. Yeah. Uh, and the biggest thing that happened was a pretty rapid weight gain. Uh, and it's all because uh, in our sleep, all kinds of wonderful things happen. That's where memories are formed. Uh, Short-term memories are formed in our sleep patterns. The brain literally repairs itself when we sleep and a great bit of our metabolism happens in our sleep. So if you're not getting good sleep, uh, and a lot of Americans aren't, uh, we're, we're a stressed out uh, culture. Uh, so do yourself a favor, get rid of all the caffeine. Um, uh, find a way, you need at least seven hours uh, a night. It does wonders for your brain, wonders for your mood, wonders for your health, get your proper sleep. He's much more fun to be around I now. am. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Back to the old me. <laughs> exactly. Now if I can just lose the weight, it'll be, it'll be great. Well, there isn't a person watching us right now who hasn't been touched in some way by cancer. But now, as Lori Johnson tells us, a new cancer drug is providing hope to people who are suffering from this dreaded disease. Scientists at Raphael Pharmaceuticals believe their new drug, CPI-613, is a breakthrough for people suffering from some of the most devastating types of cancer, such as pancreatic, lymphoma, and lung. This is a vial of CPI-613. It's administered to cancer patients intravenously in a hospital. Each infusion lasts up to two hours. Cancer cells have different nutritional needs than healthy cells. CPI-613 targets cancer metabolism, which is a relatively new way of treating the disease. I think uh, at Raphael, we're really on the cusp of some very exciting times ahead in the field of oncology. CPI-613 has performed very well in clinical trials and could be on the market as soon as next year. But people who need it right now might qualify for what's called compassionate use. So we uh, currently do not charge for compassionate use. We actually believe uh, in helping, and so we currently give our drug uh, without charging anything for compassionate use. CPI-613 reportedly has fewer side effects than other cancer drugs. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Wow, I hope that's a major breakthrough. It would be wonderful. <laughs> it would be absolutely wonderful. It's something we've long dreamed of, a cure for cancer. And if you can starve those cancer cells by depriving them of all of their nutrition, what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful breakthrough. Well, if you missed it earlier this week, you can watch the interview with Raphael Pharmaceuticals' Dr. Robert Shore and Howard Jonas on CBNNews.com. And it's wonderful that one of them is a rabbi. Yeah. <laughs> well, up next, an inmate who wanted to be feared, so he became a Satanist.
I love that people were scared of me. And boy, that really fed that ego. But there was one person who wasn't afraid of him. Find out who it was and how she changed his life up next. Brian Cole robbed more than 200 homes. He shot a man at point blank, caused a man to be burned to death, and served for 20 years as a devout pagan priest. Still, no matter what he did or who he got involved with, his mother never stopped praying for him. I hated people all my life. And if I couldn't use you, you meant nothing to me at all. Being a short kid with buck teeth, Brian Cole was the perfect target for bullies. But none of his classmates teasing compared to the physical and emotional abuse he received from his own father. I had this idea all through life that until I got to the age where I could take my dad on fisticuffs, that I would never be right with him. I hated him. I hated him. As Brian grew, so did his hatred and by fifth grade, he began stealing and picking fights in school and church. I was getting the finger pointing and that you're a little troublemaker and you're a nobody, you're a nothing, you're never gonna amount to anything, you're a sinner, you're going to hell. Here I was, 10 years old. And I didn't wanna be at home. And I don't wanna be at school. I don't wanna be at church. But one person was different than the rest. His mother, Dorothy. I always told him I loved him. And I'd say, no matter what you do, you're not gonna turn my love away. Then Brian met some older kids from the neighboring high school. They offered him a cigarette and friendship. He accepted both gladly. They stuck up for me. So now the tables got turned. And I remember realizing that and, and saying to myself, now it's my turn. Emboldened by his new friends, Brian became what he hated most. And pretty soon, everybody knew his name. I was a, a big time drug addict and selling marijuana, I was selling pornography in schools, breaking into churches and stealing their sound equipment and trashing the place. I loved it, I loved that people looked up to me, I loved that people were scared of me, and I was the man. <laughs> when Brian was 14, his father turned him in for dealing pot. For the next four years, he was shuffled around group homes, treatment centers, and psych wards while continuing to sell drugs and steal. Still, his mother refused to give up on him. I tried my best. It was just one thing after another. It was hard. I was happy where I was at and it couldn't change me. The, the drugs were my life. At 18, Brian aged out of the system and his parents divorced. Shortly after, a sting operation landed him in jail. He was charged with burglarizing 250 homes and sentenced to 10 years in prison. While in maximum security, Brian took up a new hobby he believed would further his reputation, Satanism. By then, I was already heavy into the speeders, heavy into LSD. Seeing the fear in people's eyes, knowing what I was involved with, even the guards, boy, that, that really fed that ego. Then shortly after his release in 1994, Brian's new girlfriend cheated on him with her soon-to-be ex-husband. Brian, in turn, broke into the man's home and shot him point blank. The man survived, and a tip led to Brian's arrest. That tip came from his mother. Of course I blame my mom. You're gonna do me like that? At that point, I decided there's nothing more I could do for him. I had to pray for him. That's the only thing that would bring me through. <laughs> After serving 12 years, Brian was a free man. He reconnected with an old friend and customer and turned him on to a new addiction, meth. One night after going on a six-day binge, his friend passed out on a mattress next to a heat register. It caught fire and he burned to death. A year later, Brian was once again behind bars. I was in my 40s and I just didn't want to live anymore. I knew I was responsible. Desperate to get clean, Brian joined what turned out to be a faith-based drug and alcohol program. 
I found out you had to have a Bible in order to do the homework. And I'm like, oh man. It was all filling in the blanks from scripture. So as I'm filling in the blanks, I saw this verse, Psalm 51, seven, and it says, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. And it blew me away because it was word for word, part of the cleansing rituals in the occult. Like, what is this doing here? And that's when it went from just filling in the blanks to now I'm reading some stuff. The Lord said, you shall know the truth. And the truth is that you're free. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and life. And because I was reading truth, it was already starting to change me. Instead of me filling in the blanks now, the, the gospel was filling in mine. A few weeks later, he was given a new assignment, write to someone who had been hurt by his addictions. Brian wrote his mother, and she responded with a 13-page letter. I didn't even get past a page and a half. And I wept. <laughs> I realized that all my life, I had hurt my mom up to the point where she wanted to just die. But it was at that moment Brian realized he had never been unloved. She told me that she had been praying for me ever since I got lost. It blew me away. It blew me away that for 33 years, my mom never gave up on me. That's real love. That's the love of Christ. As much as Brian wanted God's love, one thing kept holding him back. How could God forgive me for the things I said and did against him personally? The old chaplain at the jail, I told him about that and he said, you been reading your Bible? I said, yes, sir. And he said, you read that part about as far as the East is from the West? And I said, yeah. And he goes, do you think I can forgive or forget? And I said, no, sir. And he goes, he chooses to. And that's what it took. And on January 22nd, 2009, I got on my knees and, and I said, I'm all in. Your Lord, use me. Yeah. Well, I never in the world thought I'd see <laughs> see this miracle in my life. So there is a Lord. Brian renounced Satanism and over the next 18 months learned to forgive and be forgiven. And by his release in 2010, there was only one person left he needed to make peace with. I went to my dad shortly after I was released and I said, I hope you can forgive me. Shortly after that, I was over at his place one day and, and he said, you know what, Brian? I love you and I'm proud of you. And I had not heard those two words all my life. Brian, who's now a husband, father, and pastor, has a new purpose, to share God's love and forgiveness with others. I want to be a picture of hope for anybody, this, especially those involved in, in crimes and, and ex-convicts and, and the, the hurting, the, the manipulated, those coming out of drugs. Because I want them, I want them to have the same thing I got. I want to show them Jesus. I want to show you Jesus. I want to show you the salvation that I found, the joy, the peace, the new life. All the old things have passed away, and behold, all things are made new. What did, it, what did it take for Brian? Well, it took opening the Bible, and there a very unusual verse, purge me with hyssop. And, and he says, that's what I used to do in the ritual. And here the Bible is talking about purity, a purity that can come not from some ceremony, but from a living God who can cleanse you, who can literally remake you, regenerate you from your innermost being. So the things you used to do, the compulsions that used to control you, no longer do. And you can live a life of love and of helping other people and of doing good things, feeling good about yourself, your place in the universe, your relationship with God. You can have peace with God. You can have peace with your family. You can have peace with those you've hurt. What an amazing thing, an amazing salvation. 
How do you get it? Well, you have to do the same thing that Brian did. First, he, he said, I, I want to change. I want to turn my life around. And he started going through uh, what looks like a 12-step process. And he surrendered. And then there was homework involved in that. Part of that homework required him to start reading the Bible. Read the Word of God. Let it get deep within you. And then that verse that was quickened to him, that caused him to say, I want this. I want to try this. And so he prayed, Jesus, will you help me? Will you cleanse me? Will you purge me? Will you wake, make me new? And if you'll do that, you'll do the same thing. The same result will happen to you. God's no respecter of persons. What he's done for others, he will do for you. Now, if you need help with this prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is pick up the phone and call us. It's toll free, 1-800-700-7000. We're not here to condemn you. We're not here to judge you. We're here to tell you there's a God who loves you and can change you from the inside. So if you want to pray that prayer, call us, 1-800-700-7000. Terry? I want to encourage you to stay with us because after this break, we're going to pray for your needs. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to the to 700 Club Interactive. We want to t pray for you. We want to take time to pray for you. And some prayer requests have come in from our Facebook page. And Terry has the first one. I do. This is from Tiffany who writes, continue to pray with and for me. I was told I can't have my own children, but I serve a big God. I have had three failed adoptions, six miscarriages, and three failed IVF treatments. I will continue to trust him despite my circumstances. My and Thomas writes, I have fallen away. Please pray for me. I'm back in a dark hole and feel stuck. Please pray that God will give me a new spirit and a new heart. I feel lost again. And then Brandon writes, please pray for me. I was molested when I was 10 years old. I feel like I'll never get married or have a family or be what God wants me to be. Join with us. Don't just watch us pray, but join with us. Let's create a great circle of prayer and realize there is a God who answers prayer who wants to watch over us, provide for our every need. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Let's pray. Lord, we just lift Tiffany to you right now. And as she has cried out, just as Hannah cried out for a child, give her her request. And so we pray over Tiffany. Now we speak directly to her womb, to her ovaries, and give her the power mm. to create life. Give her her heart's desire, Lord God. And we yes. dedicate this child to you and to your service. Hear her cry, answer it now. Now for Thomas, who has fallen away, Lord God, we just ask for him that you would restore to him the joy yes. of salvation, that he would know that you are able to receive him again, and that the story of the prodigal is just for him. You forgive seven times 70 and just restore, to, restore light and joy. Mm -hmm. Take him out of that dark pit, Lord God. Take him out and show him the light. And now for Brandon, the one who was molested and, and is doubting his future, can he have a family? Can he can he get past this trauma? Lord God Almighty, heal. Yes. Heal his heart. Heal his spirit. Give him a new mind and a new relationship with you. Mm -hmm. Let him know that you're able to conquer everything. And what the enemy meant for evil, you're able to transform. So transform him now. Renew a right spirit, a right mind, a right outlook. Let him know that you believe in his future. Thank you. Do it, Lord. And now for those who are watching, let your grace, let your peace, let your love just flow over them and be all around them and in them, behind them, before them, above them, below them, in their innermost heart, Lord God. Let your peace break out and multiply and increase let them know that you are their shepherd. 
and they will never want. You will always watch over them. You'll never leave them. You'll never forsake them. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you need prayer, we're here for you. All you have to do is call us, 1-800-700-7000. Here's a word for you. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart.